What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the Civilization 5 Old World AI only battle. We continue with some exciting stuff going on in the world. I did not load in the full map, so let's quickly do that. But um, we will have just an action episode today. There's going to be no inforadic checks, none of that. We will just be focusing purely on getting through some turns, letting some action unfold, which should be exciting. And straight away, India, another Civ beating on the dead horse that is the Huns. Got one city left in the corner. That settler obviously managed to sneak along. Persia may also get one up here. It's good that the map fills up. It's not so fun when there's lots of empty spaces everywhere. So that's good news. Um, yeah, we'll see how long that lasts. There's also cities. Yeah, there's the Russian Mongolia War. That is probably the biggest war we've seen so far in terms of direct head on competition. Some of the other ones would have been the France, Portugal's, and Rome's. But there we go, a city does fall to Russia early on as they continue to move eastwards. Kind of interesting. We may get a sort of Russia that looks kind of realistic, which will be pretty cool. Elsewhere there is a lot of fighting. Valachia up against Byzantium, of course. And I think Russia as well, but Russia not too... No, was it right? No, it can't have been Russia, right? I think... If, if it was, I really ignored how important that might be when it broke out. I don't, I don't think it was Russia. Russia is at war with Byzantium. Oh. Wait, is it Russia and Wallachia v Byzantium? Oh, it is. Okay, it's the other way around. Right, okay, so Russia and Wallachia. That's fine. I thought, I was like, yeah, they could... All their units are here, like, that's a mess, but... They're on opposite teams, so... Well, they're on the same team, and then Byzantium's the one on the opposite team, so that's fine. There you go. Rome's been pretty quiet. They did settle a new city, and they pretty much failed against Poland which was kind of to be expected but we'll see what they get up to they have a pretty big empire they're not I don't think anyone's attacking them anytime soon anyway so they're pretty good did France no nope, I'm imagining it I thought France had another city for some reason leaning tower of Pisa for Mali and Arabia enters the Renaissance era I think that's a bit behind but you know yeah I mean Arabia's not having the best of games down here I mean it's just no one's really emerged on top in this region. I think the Ottomans may actually do it eventually, just because they have the most cities and they've held on to them. Um, so we'll see how that goes. I mean, maybe one of the African civs as well could get involved. Congo, ugh, they're still going after Burundi, but there is peace, at least for now, between these two, which hurts Zulu. Congo, I don't think it matters as much. But yeah, there's definitely some big civs dotted around the map who are going to have a good time, right, Babylon is now in the deep ocean as well, Siam, that, ca that was a caravel, Maybe even if it's not in the deep ocean, it could be in there soon, Harappa, we've seen Finland already, Russia, the Ottomans, Siam already have scouts in South America, Portugal exploring the South Atlantic, North America, Germany and India sort of here at the moment, Persia versus Mongolia, okay, interesting. Poland pieces out with the Huns, and the Zulu and Ethiopia piece out as well, and nothing changed hands there. Oh, I think they might... Yeah, I think Ethiopia... I don't know if Ethiopia is also at war with Burundi. It's hard to tell. <laughs> but maybe they were just fighting the Zulu in Burundi territory, and then if that's the case, then it's going to get maybe a bit easier now for the Zulu to finish this siege. We'll see how that pans out. Germany settled here at some point, and I must have missed it, but I feel like that was there already as well. But there we go, they settled... Yeah, because it's much bigger than this England city, so maybe I just missed that altogether. And a city did just fall, it was Poznan up here. I th think that was in Russia's control, and now it's gone to Mongolia. So that's kind of evened out the borders a bit more. And then, yeah, they'll probably have a bit of a stalemate on this region now. But either way, kind of cool, and there's still plenty of fighting here. The Ottomans just not getting involved, just, just watching. But yeah, if Byzantium maybe gets a bit weak, or Russia leaves themselves open, maybe not Russia, but if Wallachia or Byzantium get a bit open, maybe we'll see the Ottomans go after them, try and get something. That'd be really big for them. If they could get Constantinople, that would unleash a lot of sort of their naval abilities through here into the Mediterranean even more. Still no sign of a settler making the crossing. That is kind of key to note at this point. No one wants those extra resources just yet. Maybe it's a bit too early. Um, but Harappa completes the Sistine Chapel. They are just going in. Getting every wonder that they see. They're just building it straight away. I don't know. If, I don't think they had a... Their ability wasn't linked to wonders. So 
just obviously maybe ahead on tech, you know, in a good position tech and production wise in one of their cities probably. And that's working out for them. Okay, how's Korea doing my pick? Getting a nice little 70 science bubble there. That's that's a good sign. Plenty of turtle ships to protect their waters. And they are going off to the Chinese city here of Nanjing. I don't know if this will this will be difficult. There's some mountains, but they've got some crossbowmen in there and a cannon, so they could get it done. And that would be a nice little land grab. After that it gets a bit tougher because then you're sort of looking at Mongolia, China, Japan. Some not so easy easy ones. Um, Persia did squeeze a city in up here, very remote part of the map. Ireland still remains unsettled, there's, there's pearls and dyes there, so I feel like the AI maybe goes more for strategic resources than pure luxury, and obviously they don't really need to worry about happiness, most of them are well into the high numbers. Oh no, Japan, they're no longer all on 10, in fact Nagoya here dropped in population, uh, but you know, they gained elsewhere. Keep an eye on what, what they're up to. And Nanjing here in the red. Yeah, I think Korea might get this, which is good. My pick. Doing some good stuff. We saw them take Beijing last episode. So it's good. It's good. We, I like this. This is what we like to see. Certainly for me anyway. They've not been jinxed. They've made it well past episode two. So that's a good sign. And it is interesting. Other civs will start to be catching Rome, I think. Or at least, you know, going at the same speed as them. <laughs> Russia particularly, sort of similar size now overall. It looks like there's a huge sieve in Africa, but Congo and Nubia have the same background colour. So it's it's not as huge as it looks, but there's definitely some big sieves down there too. Here we go, is this Korea's turn? I feel like this will be their turn. China goes right at the start there. Ups their defence. Russia is actually making some good progress, and there it is, Nanjing, falling into Korea's hands. So they get more land, and yep, yeah, extend their border with Mongolia. So we'll see how long that, that remains peaceful. And now they have choice Siam, India, Japan, or Mongolia, really. Maybe Persia and the Huns as well as extra little sh <laughs> shortcuts on the way, but there you go. And Russia, yeah, certainly looks like they're doing more of the effort here to take Hajir which would again add to their empire, extend it a bit further east. Do you have damage elsewhere around the map? Morocco, you've been very quiet. We don't really mention them pretty much at all. They've just got their own territory. They seem happy with this. Maybe they just can't go after some of their neighbors. Portugal, Rome, Songhai, Mali. None, none of those are easy sort of easy ones to go for. Still no settlers, just sieves exploring more and more with every turn. We'll be getting caravels. Of course, access to the sea is also important as Russia does take that city. Um, there's more and more. Morocco's now got some caravels. They could certainly be someone that comes and grabs a lot of territory because they don't have much at home. And yeah, there it is, Russia. Taking this city, adding a little bit more, weakening Mongolia who still have seven, so they're not exactly tiny. I think that's probably still a top five in terms of numbers. I mean, Russia's got, more, in terms of more than seven, I think Korea has seven. Mong uh, Russia has more than seven. Um, Rome will have more than seven. That might be it. Portugal only has six. Oh, the Zulu, I think, have three. Yeah, they have seven. So yeah, seven is kind of still right up there for Mongolia. It's not like a disaster. Rome has a little bit more, but that's about it. No one else with huge numbers. Tell you what, Berlin comes with a lot of territory. That will be something Rome and probably Poland really want. I'm not sure Poland are in the position to take it. They look behind a bit. But certainly Rome will be eyeing up Berlin. That would be a huge addition to their empire at some point. They've already got it sort of wrapped around as well. Germany and France peace out, which was never really a... Oh, France did settle in here. Did that come afterwards? Did I miss it completely? I, I don't know. <laughs> Either way, France with another city. Uh, and Wallachia pieces out with Byzantium. Nothing changing hands. So that was all good. Just a simple conflict between those two. Nothing crazy. But again, the Ottomans not involved. Just sitting there, getting stronger. 
gather in their time. I think they could still do well. I, there's just a lot of weak sieves around them. They're not in a good spot to attack people. It's kind of awkward location-wise. But once we get, if they survive long enough to get to the later eras of the game, where you get better weapons, they could easily, you know, go and grab Babylon here. That would be huge. And pick off maybe an Arabia, get this city back from Nubia, Byzantium. You know, the Ottomans will probably be stronger over time, just because they're bigger. I mean, it's not always the best assumption, but when all your cities are bigger, pretty much, than all of theirs, and you have more, genuinely that goes well for you and not them. Very peaceful down here, everyone, particularly North Africa. There's a lot of units building up, but um, yeah, apart from the sort of odd battles around Burundi, much a bit more peaceful. To be fair, Europe's been fairly quiet, most of the wars haven't meant much. It's been Asia where it's just non stop bloodbath as Korea pieces out with the Huns, so they don't have to worry about fighting them up there anymore. But there we go. A few friendships coming through, Finland and Congo, Finland and Byzantium, Mali denounces Rome, Congo and Finland with a research agreement, all interesting stuff. To the next, I'm just keeping an eye, I know it's it's not that big, but it will be cool to see someone start settling. Lots of wars against Persia, I don't think any of those are border wars, Siam is kind of, um, the Ottomans is not, but yeah, Siam kind of, yeah, no, <laughs> very close, but not close enough. Um, but yeah, we'll keep an eye on it. See if any settlers turn up. It would be uh, normally it just happens, and then we it, they they travel a lot quicker than you think they do, <laughs> or just we don't look for enough turns. For Lakia versus Persia as well. But yeah, no one there quite yet. Of course, Japan could also be one of the first in North America. Oh no, it's going to crash, isn't it? I don't know. The, oh no, it's the world. The globe was spinning. I was like, that. It normally stops spinning if it's going to crash. But these sword animations stopped in the middle. So I was like, uh, not sure. But no, the globe was spinning. So the World's Congress is founded. I will go back to my usual of just voting for embargoing city states. <laughs> but yeah, Japan could definitely be the first civ in the new world as well. Because it's only like two tiles once they get a caravel. Which they haven't quite got there yet. But I don't can't imagine they'll be too far away. Doesn't look like they're doing that bad as a sieve. You know, we've seen sieves like Germany be able to do it, and they are doing way worse than Japan. I guess for Japan, they just have a limited... They've had a limited experience so far, you know, they've not had access to much. So that's going to soon potentially change, which could be interesting. Burundi with some denouncements. Different things going on. A lot of denouncements of Russia as the Taj Mahal is completed by Harappa. Another wonder for them. They're going to have so many bonuses. And it does look like they're maybe just thinking about invading India here. Just maybe. Is it, it could, yeah, I reckon this could, this would be really smart, by the way. They look like they would win. Russia completes the Red Fort, so they will get some nice bonuses too. But yeah, I think Harappa might be just iron this up their units are a bit more shifted to that eastern border than you'd expect we will see and i could easily catch india off guard here as the zulu get the forbidden palace mali has their turn congo i think that russia mongolia war has not really pushed on from where yeah okay so one city overall net russia's gained one city um and then yeah of the three that have moved here you go. Okay, no open borders, maybe not. Oh, I thought that would have been a good move for Harappa. They could have easily sort of encircled Mumbai there. Got that. Maybe got Delhi as well. And then they'd be looking pretty good down here. There's a strong sieve in India. They could I'd fancy them against Siam. And again, they'd have more production maybe to go and go after Arabia for a second time. Not quite worked out for them just yet. Bit surprised the Ottomans talked about them a lot this episode but they've got their Janissary units and they're not really not really making the most of those for the time period yes golden age that's just what we needed on the Venetian submarine Rome has entered the industrial era okay do they have any units that are kind of menacing I guess privateers are pretty menacing um, for the relative to the other sieves, I mean, again, it doesn't really work like that without declaring war, but you can imagine they'll be, you know, 
raiding coastlines around here. They're, they're going to be a strong naval force this game. Probably they have to beat Morocco if they ever want to get out, but maybe they'll be contained to the Mediterranean. But Byzantium looks more than capable of putting up a fight. Lots of boats for them too. It will be quite a brutal one. I mean, if you can like hold them off in this narrow choke point with the Galeuses, maybe get frigates later on, city bombardment from here, I think Byzantium could actually kind of defend themselves pretty well there from Rome, and then it would just be sort of a land defense here. That's actually really tough. So yeah, Rome will probably not... If they're smart, they won't go for that. Um, but you never know. I, I mean, I don't know what Rome... None of these are, like, super easy, but... There you go. They also added another city here at some point. So there you go. That will fill in the gap even more. Because France and Portugal, maybe they just didn't want to didn't want to poke Rome with a stick by settling there. So Rome will get that. And that will allow them to connect all that coastline. Have more sort of coastal production as well. Build more ships. Keeps France and Portugal essentially out of the Mediterranean. So that's probably a smart move. Good job for Rome. England haven't really done much. Kind of a shame. Maybe one day. Korea with a scout on Hawaii. Still no signs of any settlers just yet. Not They don't even look like they're being built. So it's interesting. I'm sure we'll get there in the end. But there is far more civs now exploring France as well. You can see everyone just going around Portugal. Babylon, more Portugal. Uh, Germany, Arabia, even in North America. So there's definitely people looking around. Morocco's down here. Egypt. So yeah, Sivs are certainly looking. Mali, that could be a big one. They could definitely go and grab a lot of that for themselves. Arabia attacks Wallachia, which is not important. And so does Germany. No, no border there. Wallachia, though, they are packed in very tightly here. That is going to be messy when something eventually happens to them <laughs> at some point. Yeah, Harappa, it just never happened. It looks like they may actually... Someone's fighting Siam by the look of it. That might be Harappa. Not sure. Is it? I don't think so. Is this menu going to open for me? Doesn't look like it. Oh, oh there we go. Finally, finally. Right, Harappa. They're not at war with anyone, so I don't know who's at war with Siam doing damage to them. Somebody from a distance, maybe, no, not Korea, oh, maybe Persia from a distance, <laughs> Arabia and the Zulu, peace out, Finland joins the war on Wallachia, again, not particularly huge, it needs to be one of Poland, Russia, Rome, or Ottomans, or Byzantium, really, to have an effect, and here we still have a battle raging on, as Arabia goes after Persia this time, I think last time Persia attacked Arabia, well, that crossbowman's in a bit of an awkward spot, but this is going to be very difficult for Arabia to get towards Persia, yeah, I mean, this area is just a mess. They need, like, a big, strong sieve to just come and clean it up because there's no way, if not, look, but Babylon's sort of split into two empires. So is Persia. It's just a complete mess. Harappa's not really interested. Arabia's not going to squeeze for a one-tile gap. I think taking Babylon would help, like, whether it be Arabia or the Ottomans. One of them getting this would kind of probably be enough to start the unification process. Mongolia and the Huns, peace out. The Huns survive in their one little city. Mongolia obviously more occupied with their defense from Russia, who are very open in the west. I mean, I don't know if Poland is brave enough, but it's not something to consider if it was to be declared. I mean, if they all teamed up, like Poland, Wallachia, and the Ottomans, that could get pretty messy pretty quickly before Russia has a chance to even get home. I don't know. They are building roads fairly quickly but they all flow through the south here and then they'd have to come back to here which could easily have been fallen by then and then you're sort of trudging along to St. Petersburg and at that point you know Moscow could be gone although they do now have a Cossack unit so be careful wouldn't mess with those they're obviously technologically still doing well they have cannons which I don't think some of these civs do have either so I wouldn't wouldn't rule them out just yet wait is Rome okay oh okay no what is Germany I I'm so confused. There's just damage everywhere. Oh, it's Germany v. Valake here. Okay. I was trying to work that out. Like, I thought they weren't at war with Rome, but then they, they're fighting. Like, what's going on? What, what's happening here? People that like to smile the most. Okay. We'll skip over that one. 
turn 175. I'm not sure when we'll go into highlights. Um, once it gets like unbearably slow is usually the turning point. I think we've done 25 turns this episode, so it's like one. It's over one a minute, which is fine. And obviously sometimes I talk or don't realise the turns ended, so there's no rush to do that. But uh, yeah, maybe by the end of this week, you know, once we get to like the 250 mark, that's when we'll probably have to just sort of skip it along a little bit, which is absolutely fine. Um, and to be expected. I think the days of like 50 episode series just that doesn't appeal to people anymore. So I think that, yeah, that's not really a thing. I think we're aiming for sort of 10. This is 5, so maybe 15 um, at most, which is like 3, 2, 3, yeah, 3, 4 weeks at most. Um, but yeah, I think the, t the days of like a 60 episode game are just gone. I don't think. And I don't blame people. I don't have the attention span or the time to watch that if it was someone else or make it myself, probably. So that makes sense. I'm going to try to go for the quality over quantity <laughs> approach this time. Uh, there is a Roman settler. We'll see if that is maybe destined for the new world or not. But that will be it for this episode. So as always, if you have enjoyed, be sure to leave a like and a comment down below. Be sure to subscribe as well if you are new to the channel. And I'll see you in the next one.